Whether it was the family owned garden center that he operated for many years, his incredible native plant garden, or now Moss, my friend Paul Moore jumps in with both feet anytime he does anything. And uh, what he's done with this beautiful moss lawn in his shade garden is no exception. Well, Paul, I guess it's been about three years since we were up here and we actually featured the garden on the show. Right. And you had just started kind of this little section of moss lawn at that point. Tell us all about your experience with moss and, and what sort of prompted you to do this moss lawn. Well, being on top of a hill like I am, the soil's very thin, and right. every year I'd plant grass seed, and by mid middle of summer it was dead or dying. So I just got tired. I've tried every grass seed there was, you know, every miracle blend that was supposed right. to work <laughs> through in Nashville. That every never shade, did. the heat, right. the humidity, right. all that. And uh, so I just let this one section of area, uh, there was one little patch of moss in it. So I said, I'm not gonna do anything. Just let that patch of moss grow mm -hmm. and just see what it does. I kept the debris off of it, the leaves and just kept it clean. Right. And within one year, it had basically filled this area. Now it wasn't full yet, but I knew it was it working. Was, it was coming along. It was coming along yeah. and uh, with little encouragement. So uh, then I made the, uh, for after about two or three years, this really got nice and full. So I made the big decision to take on this larger section of, la right. of lawn that was grass and turn it over into moss. And so that is, what we're kind of walking into now and just in two or three years time because you were still sort of struggling this right. with this area when we were here right. the last time so right. just in two or three years time it is completely turned into a moss lawn a moss lawn a moss it's, lawn. Uh, it's worked really well and you know the thing about it it's it just looks good all year round right you know even a, a slight bit of rain and it'll just pick up this iridescent green, green yeah. and uh, it's just fun to watch in different environmental conditions. Right. And the majority of this is moss that just was naturally here. Right. Now I have over in this area an experiment going with uh, adding some different moss. You can see the patchwork. Yep. That's a uh, hypnum moss, hypnum curvifolium moss in the little squares. And that little brighter green over to the right is fern moss, Thuidium delicatulum. So I'm kind of adding some others to get a little variety there. You actually have purchased this moss just like you would purchase plants at a nursery. Exactly. Um, and it comes in these little squares like that, or does it come in sheets, or it how do you? It comes in sheets, and I just kind of cut them in more of these uniform squares. Right. And uh, just to try to see how just quickly it would spread. Patch it in. This soil is just, it's real thin again. It's this Fort Payne talcum powder looking soil. Right. And it gets bone dry in the summer. And I've exposed this, this moss to everything, I mean to heat, to drought, yeah. you know, if it gets dry, it just goes dormant. The mm -hmm. first little bit of water, it'll green right back up. Right. And it just, you know, it's just been a lot of enjoyment with not a lot of, a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you've mentioned a couple of varieties of moss that you have here, but I know that around the front of the house, you also have another little experiment going on that I would love to go and take a look at. Sounds great. Well, the topic of the day is moss, but I can't walk past this patch of golden seal that you have here. How old would you say that that probably is? That clump's probably about four or five years old. I mean, I think it's a great substitute for hosta in the native plant garden. Right. And I'm really into like herbal and medicinal plants. Uh -huh. So it just, it makes a great plant. The, the white flowers will turn into a green berry and then a bright red berry in the fall. In the fall. And I can see that it's either spreading or reseeding itself around, probably a little bit of both. So it does make, after a few years, a really nice colony. Right, it'll make a nice little ground cover. Well, another really nice specimen, and you have several of these in the garden, is this leatherwood. This is a really cool little plant. Yeah, and this one's uh, probably about 12 years old, I would say, at least, 12 to 15 years old. Has yellow flowers in the spring, nice clear yellow fall color. Needs no pruning whatsoever. And uh, the Native Americans used to uh, make cordage out of the bark, and they could make bowstrings and because the bark is so tough and so flexible. And flexible, right. So out here in your front garden, you have almost uh, like a little experimental spot, a, a trial garden, if you will, for mosses. So how did, how did this part of it get started? And, and tell us a little about, about your experience with these. Well, for me, I just got so into moss after doing the moss lawn, I right. wanted to just to show, as the more I learned about them, show the broad spectrum of heights and textures and color ranges. Uh -huh. And for me, just to learn about the different varieties. And right. so here I can really showcase them. Okay. So you've got 
five or six different varieties Probably in here? Probably more like 10 or 12 10 in here or 12. at least. Okay. But, but three or four that you really enjoy having here and that have done well. So let's talk about those. All right, this is, uh, this is one of my favorites here. This is called tree moss, uh, Climacium americanum. And it actually looks like a little conifer tree. If you were to pull up one, it looks just like a little conifer. Oh yeah, it does. Real easy. Almost has little branches and- Little branch, side yeah. branches. Real yeah. easy to grow. Another one that's uh, very unique is this uh, Bartramia pomiformis, or called apple moss. This really bright green color. You can see the contrast between the two. Right. And this one gets little sporophytes that look like little green apples. So that's why they called it apple moss. Cool. And another one of my favorites, which I used to patch in on the lawn over on the other side, is this Hypnum curvifolium moss. Uh -huh. It's a type of sheet moss. And it's already starting to kind of grow up on these rocks right. here. It does really well. And it's, it's almost, if you look really closely, almost has a little fern-like it does. Leaf to it. And the other common name is brocade moss. If you look very closely, it looks like brocade. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is one I really enjoy here. The common name, one of the common names is worm moss, but it's actually Bryo andersonii illicebra. It's a mouthful, but it looks like little, look like little worms. Very easy to grow, and this one's actually growing on a rock. So they grow in such a wide variety of, of places. We've seen it in the lawn, we've seen them on rocks. I know there are mosses, I think we typically think of mosses that love shady and damp spots, but there are mosses that grow dry and in the sun. Tell me about the maintenance that they require. Well, the maintenance is really a lot less than I thought it was gonna be when I started. Right. I don't, it, moss doesn't require any fertilizer. Uh, you don't have to mow it, so it just stays green right. year round. Right. Uh, I do uh, manually weed it. That's yeah. one of, it's, from that standpoint, it's a little more labor intensive, but you know, with a lawn, you've got to cut grass, you've got to do leaves, you've got yeah. the maintenance on the mower, you've got the noise. Sure. And for, you know, for the effort I put in it, it really rewards me year round. So the moss really fits into the garden as, as one piece of a bigger philosophy. Right. Well, I think one thing for sure is, you know, you really have to be patient with a garden like right. this. I mean, you, you know, I want it to look as natural, you know, as possible. And so I plant, I space plants where they're allowed to kind of attain their natural shape. Uh -huh. I give, you know, plants room to grow. Um, I let them just kind of strike their own balance. And right. uh, for me, you know, this is basically a springtime garden. Sure. And that's when I enjoy gardening because, face it, summer, summer gardening in Nashville is brutal. It's brutal sometimes. It and is. Uh, I don't use any, you know, chemicals. I use organic fertilizers and, right. you know, just when I want to feed. And uh, that way it keeps it low maintenance. Yeah, and and, uh, and it's again, this is a collection garden where I can really learn about all the native plants, mm -hmm. as many as I can possibly grow, and just to, to know them. Right, and obviously you live in the woods, so the leaves fall, the leaves stay. There's not leaf cleanup that happens in in most of the places. Well, that's my natural fertilizer, so I right. just let those leaves fall and decompose. And decompose. I put hardwood on the paths. Because you do live in a wooded area, how do you just keep the forest from taking completely over? How do you keep it from being nothing but trees? Well, I monitor it. You know, that, uh -huh. what's one of the great joys is just I walk the garden numerous times a day. Right. And if you work at it a little every day, it's not a big deal. Now, exactly. If you wait three months, then you've got you've got <laughs> a problem. You've got a problem on your hands. <laughs> That's right. Well, and I do the same thing in my own garden, which you know is a very sort of intensely gardened little spot. But you know, when I'm out in the morning, if I see something, I do it then. Right. And not you know, try not to do it six weeks down the road right. when the problem that was six weeks ago is now tenfold. That's right, that's so, right. Let's nip it, nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. Well, with all that you have learned about moss, I know that there have to be some good resources out there, but, but probably not very many of them. So you've, you have three favorites here. And my, my ultimate favorite is uh, The Magical World of Moss Gardening by Annie Martin. Right. And uh, it's a real how-to for people just how to garden with moss, right. and there's just not many resources like that. And uh, it's, it's just an excellent resource. I highly recommend this one. Okay. And then the other two maybe are a little more scientific in nature. Well, or... this, one, this one's actually written by Robin Wall Kimmerer. What I love about it is she's, uh, she's a Native American and she's also a bryologist. Okay. So she weaves those two disciplines in just a beautifully written right. uh, book. And then an ID source. And just a great ID source. This is a relatively new one, The Common Mosses of the Northeast and Appalachians. Great right. book. Um, now, what about sources for moss? 
do, do you collect or do you not collect? Well, um, you don't want to collect from the wild. I mean, I'll move, like from my own moss, I've moved some from my property in, you know, sure. a couple of spots. But uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you don't have that resource, then uh, 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 Annie Martin has a mossery. They call it a right, mossery, right? And it's uh, mountainmoss.com, and that's where I bought mo most of the moss most for this of the area. Type that, types that you have, right? So there are some resources out there, not very many, but uh, the ones that they're and certainly Annie's. I, I follow her on Facebook and some other places, yeah. and it's a whole lot of fun to watch what's going on and. And if you're into moss at all, I, I think she's sort of the queen of it all right now. Yes, yeah, she is, and and it's important to know that she doesn't wild collect. I mean, right. She has she'll go in ahead of a you know where they're going to bulldoze a bulldozer, or, right, and rescue moss. She might even get it off a roof of a house. Right. But, but that's how she gets it, and she propagates it as well. In the, at, at the mossery, at, at the, the, moss, the moss nursery. That's right, the moss <laughs> right. nursery. Thank you so much for taking some time to be with us today. And well, uh, Troy, thank you so much, and I have to gift you with an official. Moss Man Defender of the Environment t-shirt. <laughs> awesome, I love it. Can't wait to wear it. This will be perfect to have out and about and in the garden. All right, sounds great. Thanks. Thanks, Troy.